Hello, my name is Matt, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to find elements in C++ collections. And that means lists, vectors, std arrays, maps, you name it. As, as long as it's a C++ standard library collection, this method should work for you. Before we start, I want to kindly ask you to visit my website and check out my posts. They're all software development uh, related posts, so you might find one or two of them quite useful for you. And also to subscribe to the channel and give a like to the video. It will help me out quite a lot. So let's get into it. I've got here some boilerplate code that I've just done here for the purpose of this tutorial. And we've got a person's array here and you can see it stores the height, the age and the name of a person uh, in the types float, int and string view respectively. Uh, we've also got a people uh, stud array which stores uh, my individual persons if it makes sense. So I've got all of the, the people data here and I've got eight elements in here. Uh, it's worth noting that this is right now a std array, but it should also work for vectors, for lists, for example, and also for maps, which I'll explain uh, later how, how you tweak one minor detail to make it work for maps. And as a spoiler as well, I'm going to say that we're going to be using the find if function here in the uh, algorithm library. And this is essentially a collection of find algorithms well, that you can use to find a particular element in a list. In particular, we're going to use the find if function, uh, which is here. And you can see that it takes it takes a, an input iterator to the first element of your collection, uh, an input iterator to the last element of your collection, and a predicate, which is essentially a fancy uh, way of saying a function or a lambda that will check each element for a particular criteria, so you can match elements. Uh, if you don't know what input iterators are or iterators in general, uh, don't worry too much. They're essentially just pointers and you'll see how they work in a second just when you write the code, all right? So let's get into it. I'm actually gonna write the code here first and then I'll explain how it works after I'm done because I think that's a little bit better instead of just explaining as I go and saves a bit of time as well. So this is essentially, you know, the bread and butter of finding elements in C++. And what I've actually done here is I've actually checked that I'm sending a particular argument, a string argument to my program, which will be the name uh, that we're going to match to to one of the items in the list. We're going to be finding a particular person with that name. That's the idea. Uh, we're going to store that name that we're going to find to a variable called name to find, which is a string view, and it comes from the string view header here. Okay, uh, and this is the most important call of this video. Uh, we've got auto const found, and we've got here a call to uh, standard find if, and you can see it takes an input iterator, which remember is what I said, it's kind of the pointer to the, the beginning of your list. And you can do it like this in C++ if you just want to get the actual beginning of your list, you know, the first to the last element, you do begin and then inside the parameters you pass your list, which is peoples for me, oh sorry, people for me. And the end, which does the same thing, uh, you just call end here and then people. And this is a, these two are functions that are defined in the standard and it sort of works like this uh, because of something called ADL in C++, but don't worry too much if you don't know what I mean, it just works. And then perhaps the uh, the most important uh, argument here of this function as well, and the last one is the function that is gonna be called for each of the elements in the people array to check for a matching element. And here I'm actually just passing a lambda and that lambda takes an auto const person here. And this, again, I'm not bothering too much about the types. You can also just write it like this with auto consts everywhere or simply just auto if you need to actually change a value, uh, drop the const. The C++ compiler will deduce all of that for you. It will essentially run this function here for every element of your list. It will pass in each element as a person argument to that function. And then if it returns, if this function returns true for a particular element, that means std find if is done and you found your element. And if it returns false, it will just keep going until it finds an element, okay? So this is what I've got here. I'm simply returning, you know, person.name equals equals name to find. So I'm checking if the person's, the current person's name is the same as the one I wanted to find, okay? But that brings me to another point. What if you don't have the particular element you're looking for in a list? Well, it's all to do with the return type of find if. So you can see here found stores a return type. And this return type is actually an iterator as well. So essentially a pointer to one of the elements. So if it hasn't found an element, then found is not going to be equals to a valid pointer. And you can check that. I'll show you that in a second. But if it has find if it has found uh, an element, then found is going to be a valid iterator and you can use it freely once you've done that check. Okay. So this is how you check for a valid iterator. In other words, this is how you check 
whether or not your find if actually found an element. So this is it. This is the kind of template check you're going to be doing in your code when you want to find an element from a list. You're simply going to check that the found element isn't the end of the people or the array that you're looking uh, to query here. Okay, because if it is the end, then it means it hasn't found the element. And end is kind of, I know it probably implies the last element of your list, but it's actually the element after that. So kind of like a new, no pointer, if you see what I mean. So if it is sort of a no pointer here, or if this, this found is no, then that means uh, found find if hasn't found your element, which means you don't have the element in the first place. However, if you didn't go through this branch, then you can actually use that found iterator to print information about the element that you found, like this. And this is it. So here, you know, once you know that you have found the element, so we didn't go through the, you know, the found equals equals end of people, that means the found iterator is valid, which means you can use it essentially like a pointer in C++ with this arrow iterator here to find a particular um, member of your information, so of your struct here. So I've got found.name to print the name of it. And since the string view and puts only works with C strings, the dot data variable should work fine here. Uh, I've also got the age of the found element here and you can see i'm actually converting the age to a string in the first place and then using the c string to get that c string to work with puts and the same thing here for the height okay so i've actually pre-prepared the argument here so i've, I've put in lucas which is going to be passed as my sec my second argument to my program the first one if you've been watching my my c++ courses is always the name of the program so my second argument is always going to be this this uh, this value here that you pass in and because i pass in lucas is going to find me this here, which is the second element of my list. And it, and it prints the information of that quite quite neatly here. So you've got Lucas and then the age is 22 and then 1.9, which is essentially what I've got here. Okay. And as a bonus tip for you, if you actually need to find the position of the element you found, it's actually very easy with a function called std distance. And you can do it sort of like this. And voila, it should just work just fine. So just as a, a note here, this std distance uh, function takes, again, an iterator to the beginning of your list where you want to be counted from, your zeroth element, which is essentially just the beginning of people in my case here, and then the element you want to count to, which is found here, which is the element that we found previously. And you can see here the position of my element is 1, which means it's the second element in my list, as you can see. And if I do change this to something else like Patrick, for example, it should find, uh, I believe, six here, my sixth element or my uh, my seventh element or position six, just here, just fine. And that is it. Uh, just one more point here. If you do have a map, uh, you essentially have a key and a value for each element, which means that this argument here to your, to your find function is not going to be a struct like this. It's actually going to be a pair of key and value. And if you want to check, for example, that a key matches a particular value, you should probably do this here instead. So put in first dot name. So person dot first dot name. Uh, if you assume that this person is actually a stored in a map of person to person, for example, so a key is a person, the value will be a person as well, just for the sake of simplicity. And if you want to check the value in a map, you'd put second here. And that is it. And this should work for all the containers. Map is a particular edge case because obviously you've got keys and values. But if I were to change this to a vector here and drop the const expert because it doesn't work with vectors. And if I include the vector header, it should still work just fine, as you can see. Okay, so same thing here, same output, because this find if function works for every C++ collections that there are in the C++ standard. All right. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did like it, uh, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. It does help me out quite, quite a lot. And again, uh, do visit my website. Let me know what you think about the posts. If you've got any questions, any feedbacks or suggestions, drop a comment below and I'll reply to you as, as soon as I can. Okay. Thank you and bye-bye.